Hi, I'm Susan, and today I'd like to show you how I make these beautiful little shibori embellishments. You can use them as a pendant, you could use them on a purse, you can use them in all sorts of things. They're very different, they're very delicate, and they're very, very nice for Valentine's Day. So let's get started. I'm starting out with just a piece of paper that I've folded in half and made it into a heart. And now I'm going to basically just trace that heart out onto some stiff felt. Now there's lacy stiff stuff. There's Target has like a stack of felt that actually works pretty good. There's lots of different kinds of stiff felt or stiff fabric you can use. Um, interfacing, the stiffest one you can get at like a fabric store will do the same thing. Anything that's got some body to it that you can sew through. And all I'm doing is tracing around my heart so that I have a pattern. And I like to cut this out and make sure there's no points or sharp edges because the thread does not like those and will catch on to it. So just make sure you have, doesn't matter how nice it is, how perfect it is, you're gonna cut this in the end. Now I have some shibori ribbon that I've dyed and I did not use regular dye with this. I used calligraphy ink that I got off of Wish and it gave this awesome bright color. Now if you were using this on the skin, I don't know what's in this ink. So I can't really say that I recommend it if you were using it for clothing. But if you're using it just for something like this where this piece will never touch the skin because it's always covered, you're fine. I don't think, see any issue with it. If we're, we're against the body, I don't know what's in it because it's got metallic kind of a shine to it and I wouldn't want to recommend something that would be toxic. So I have my thread already through my needle. I'm using Nymo thread. I'm using this dark blue only for photographic purposes. Otherwise, I would use something light like this gray that you barely can see even. Let me bring it over here. You can barely even see that on my mat. So that's the reason I'm not using it. Um, I normally would use any color that is closest to the ribbon color. It's just easier. So I'm going to take my fabric again and I'm going to fold the one corner in where the, where the ribbon already has a pleat and I'm going to fold the other one down because I want no free edges. And now I'm just going to take that in the corner and come up through this end piece here. And this will basically tack it all down. Once you get this first piece in, it's really easy breezy. This first piece because it's silk, it's slippery. And now I just like to make a tiny little stitch right next to that. And like I said, the only reason you can see it is because I'm using a contrasting thread. Normally you wouldn't even be able to see that if it were the same color thread. Now I try to push the pleats together because I really like extra pleats here. I love the way the folds look. I think they give kind of a watercolory feel. And don't worry if it's not exact and you can see the stitches. Remember, we're going to cover this with some beads here anyway, so you're not really gonna see it. And now I'm just trying to make an extra little pleat in there. And then give it another tack down. Like I said, this is the hardest one. And so sometimes you can do a little back stitch and grab it. And sometimes you have to go back and forth, like in between here I need to put another stitch. And so I'm basically making sure I just tighten this all up. Now I will tighten it up a little bit more when I get the beads on top of it. But just getting the initial laying down the silk can be very tricky because it's very slippery. And I have done this with pins and I found that the pins don't help, it just keeps sliding under the pins. Now this edge I want tucked under, so I'm just going to create another pleat there and another stitch to hold that pleat down. Now it has nothing to do with that this is a heart shape. Any shape I do, I usually for some reason like to start at one of the points. So I would either start at that point or this point. And if there isn't a point, then I just start randomly. But I find it's easier once I've got that one side tacked down to then start to cross over and tack down the other edge. It just goes faster for me. I find if I try to 
then move the fabric around there. You can, there's no rhyme or reason to this. You don't have to do it my way. I'm just saying I have found this easier. And so I just tuck that extra little pleat underneath and keep tacking it as I go around. So I am going to continue around this heart, tacking it all the way around. And then I will come back in a second and show you what that looks like because watching me sew this whole thing is very, very boring and I don't know how to sing songs and people pay me not to sing, so it might be better. But you can see how I've just tacked that and you can see all my stitches, but like I said, I'll hide them. So I will be back in a second and voila. So I'm back and I've gone all around and this is why you don't want to watch me do it because you can see, you, it, you really can't tell where I'm working. So I've tucked under the end, under this end where I started. Let me pull it closer. So this end now is underneath this end and that will help cover this free edge up. And I'm going to take the opposite end and fold it over and I am just literally going to scrunch it. I kind of really, like I said, I love these little wrinkles. I love all of the flow that the wrinkles give. So I am just going to tack this guy in the middle here. Now he's probably going to get covered up. Now you could go the other direction. It, you really can play with this and decide which colors is it you prefer. Do you like the more yellowy peachy colors? Do you like the more purpley blue colors? Because those are the ones that you pull over. I kind of like the whole darn mix. And so this is where you really need to play with it. And if you try to pin this, everybody that's screaming right now, why didn't she pin it? Why isn't she pinning it? This piece is so darn small that you keep poking yourself on the pins. So it really is easier to just tack it as you go. So I'm just pushing it down in the middle and I'm just tacking these little folds. And you can pretty much see what I'm doing because I'm working with the worst color thread I could just to show you. So I will have to be very careful that my stitches aren't too big or you will really see them. And see right in the middle here, I want to take one of these folds and I want to create another little fold in the middle. So I'm just going to go up through there. Now some people like to stuff these with cotton if you wanted it more dimensional. That's not really my cup of tea but it depends what you're using it for. You could take a cotton ball and stuff it in here. And now I'm just going to squinch down and like I said it gets a little tricky because it slides in there. But I am just going to grab the end of a pleat and try to tack it down onto another one. And you just basically keep going back and forth over all these little pleats until you get it tacked down. And it's not very difficult. It just takes a little patience. And see, I like these folds to be more together up here so I get more dimension. And so I just keep going back and forth in between all these little pleats and folds and creating this texture is really what I'm doing. And rather than just having one big piece, I try to make a little squiggle or a little crimp out of it. So you're basically kind of using the pleats almost as a texture to create a design. And it's these shadows and the highlights and all of these folds and pleats that really creates the beauty in this. And so just getting those little tacks in there. And sorry about my little puppy snoring. Okay, now this side, I really want to wrinkle it up. There we go. Oh, that was pretty. I can never get that to happen twice. So I'm just tacking this in and I will just go around 
and keep tacking and tacking probably for the next five or ten minutes so I will come back after I get this tacked in and show you how it looks. So I've got it all tacked down and you can see how nice it is. It's not perfectly tacked down. I want to show you the side of it so you can see somehow there's some there's some dimension to it and that will tighten up as we get the flowers and the other things on it so it doesn't have to be really really tight until when you're adding your beads and stuff but to edge the piece which let me show you another one that I've already edged with my crystals the crystals that are around the edge here with the seed beads are what we're doing first and I have some tiny crystals here I'm starting at the bottom doesn't matter where you start, I just happen to have ended up with my thread around this area, so I thought I'd start with this area. And I'm going to add four beads. I have size 11 seed beads, and these must be about a two millimeter crystal. And I like to add four beads at a time and edge this. So I'm just going to come up closer so you can see. And I basically just look at where the beads end and that's where I go down. And of course the thread does this to me every time I'm on film because I'm doing it in the air because I want to show you how small these beads are. You see that's a quarter. Just like the size of my heart here, it's not, it's maybe two quarters. It's not that big. So when you see the piece on a 52 inch TV and you think I've got this giant heart, it's tiny. And that's why I struggle so much getting it close. And these seed beads are the size of a poppy seed, just to give you a dimensional size. So I'm going up through the middle of these beads and I'm going to go back up through the crystal and the seed bead. And that is basically what I'm going to do to outline this entire pendant. So I will add a crystal, a seed bead, a crystal, and a seed bead. And I am just going to take that and once again go down at the end where they end up. And then I'm going to come up through the middle of the two beads. and then I'm going to go through the other two beads. That's all I'm going to do, and I'm going to continue around the entire heart, and then I will come back. So I've finished up adding all of the little crystals around, and now is the tricky part. Now you could have done this before. You could have trimmed off the felt before you put the crystals. Um, either way, you gotta be careful that you don't cut your silk or your stitches. If you just take your time, it's usually pretty good. It's only if I get one little thread that's hanging in the edge there, it's tricky. But just be patient. It only takes a second to do this. And for all the time it took to sew it down, it's worth taking the extra second <laughs> to pay attention. And so you're just basically cutting away at that thread. Now, if you have darker... Um, shibori ribbon this white will definitely show and so if you don't have colored felt don't worry about it there's alternatives I like to take a sharpie marker and I have a pink one here you could do different colors wherever you have different colors around the edge I don't think it's really worth the effort but if it makes you happy it's worth it and so I just basically color that little bit of felt on the edge so if it does happen to stick out through my threads you won't even notice it. Now this is when I start to arrange my flowers or whatever beads I'm going to put on here and I have a little dish of beads. Like I said let me show you how small these beads are. These are really tiny tiny little flowers and so it's just a matter of picking and arranging. Now most people would have picked these pale pinks and I don't particularly care for that. I think they blend in too much and you won't even see them. So these darker blues and darker purples are more my cup of tea here. I think they make more contrast. They make even more contrast over the orange side. I think I like them better there. 
And so, yep, even the purple ones kind of blends. He's not that big of a deal. He may look better over here. But I'm feeling more these turquoisey, oops, I grabbed the wrong one. These turquoisey, darker colors will probably give me a better contrast. Now, how do I sew these on? I just use these little 15s to hold them on, so I use them in the center of the flowers here. Let me get a little closer so you can see it better. So I use one to three. I never use two. Um, flowers always have odd numbers and they always look better in the middle if you have three beads or one bead. So that's my trick. If I have the really tiny, teeny ones like this, I use the one and this one I used the three just to give you an idea of what I'm doing here. And so all I'm going to do is start to sew my flowers on. I have to just decide which way I want to put them. I'm thinking, mm, I like the purple on the orange. It's a nice contrast. So we're going to just start with the purple and go from there. And this is basically how I work. I don't really think about it very long. I just start doing it. And this will start to tack down some of that shibori that is sticking up and kind of bulky and in the way. And so I'm just going to basically go back and forth, threading through my flowers. Let me move my scissor. And it gets a little tricky when you're coming up the next time trying to find that hole. So you have to wiggle that needle around a few times. But it does make a difference when you put the three in the larger flower. So if it takes you a while to find the hole. You're not the only one. You just have to keep poking at the back of this. And there we go. Now remember, I have some pearls and some other beads that I'm going to add. So there will be a spray over this way. So when I'm thinking about where I'm going to put the next flower, I always want to take that into consideration. So I'm going to add this tiny little blue and green flower. And most of you I know would never make a blue and green flower, but I like the contrast. I like the unexpected. It's not always fun to be predictable. And with these tiny ones, I mean, these are really tiny when you look at how small they are next to my fingernail. They're probably about four or five millimeters. And so most people think with polymer clay, you can only make these giant, big, chunky beads. You can make really tiny little beads. It's just if you have the patience. You can work very small. Most people do miniatures with polymer clay. So it's, it's not that you can't work small. It's just a little bit different and it's a lot more time consuming. And so I'm just going to tack that down. Now, I always like to add some freshwater pearls around this. I think the freshwater pearls have a tendency to look like um, baby's breath. Now, if you don't have, I usually buy my freshwater pearls in just white. I never buy a color. And what I do is I take a little alcohol ink, put a couple drops in and a just a soda bottle cap and roll them around till I get the color I want. If I want a pastel color, I will use rubbing alcohol, just a, a little drop of it and that'll lighten it up. So that's how I got these more pastel-y kind of lavender color. And I'm gonna use these because I kind of like the way they're gonna contrast. I don't want them to be too loud. I have some blue ones, but I don't know, maybe should I do the blue? I have to talk to myself. No, I don't want the blue. I want the white ones. Well, they're not really white. They're lavender. I had dyed them. And I just like to add these in little clusters. Now, if you don't have little tiny freshwater pearls, you could use like a size 11 seed bead. That would do the same thing. These are not that much bigger. You can even use a cluster of three size 15s. I am a use what you have kind of gal, so if you can't find these or you don't have them, 
doesn't mean you can't do this. You're just gonna do it a little differently or with something else. So I'm just creating some little flower buds with this. And you will notice, because these are only like about two millimeters, these are not much bigger than the crystals that I used. And I just randomly place them. I don't really like to plan this out. Things in nature don't really go natural, don't have too much of a plan or a straight line sometimes. They just fall, and that's how I work. It's more of my organic theory. And having these little pearls over here by the seam will start to blend that seam visually so you won't see that purple line because when we get some greenery over here you'll see what I mean. And I want to put one last one down here. So if you buy a strand of freshwater pearls and you just buy the white ones and dye them yourself you can use them in so many more projects. And I think I want one up here. Somehow it's just talking to me there. Yes. So now we have all the pearls laid out. And now I have some size 11 seed beads. These are green. Any shade you like is the best shade, or sometimes it comes down to what shade you have. And I am just basically going to add the greenery, basically four beads at a time or less. And I basically go around the pearl. And let me come closer. So I'm right next to the pearl there. And I'm going to come up right where I really want this to end. Because, see, it had a tendency to go over that way. Well, I am basically going to grab the thread from underneath. And this will pull the thread over. And now I'm going to add my other two beads that will go on the other side of the pearl and make it look like a flower bud. And see how that happens. And now I'm just going to add a little greenery, which basically is three or four beads just in a strip. Sorry if you can hear my dog outside, she's annoying. I have too many little doggies, if that's possible. Okay, so I'm, here's a classic problem. The one bead went over the fold and it's kind of going in. Don't worry about it. Go after the first bead, okay? Go through the two middle beads because now it's, it's hanging too far over that I actually need another bead or I need to pull this tighter towards the flower. And I think all I need to do is pull it tighter. So I'm just gonna go back down. Oops. Don't show off and catch the other beads. Okay, and now when I pull it tight, you see how it'll just make a perfect little line. So I'm just going to go around these little flower and make them into buds and some greenery, and then I'll come back and I'll show you the difference there. I've added all the rest of the greenery and you can see how it just really changes the whole transformation. Now, I'm going to go around, and this was the last spot I noticed, wherever I had a little piece sticking up, I just go around as I'm sewing and just tuck it in because I didn't know if I was going to put beads in there or what and sometimes I like to take the tucks and fold them different ways just so that I can get the beads to go in them but I like to make sure everything's down nice and tight so nothing's lifting or tearing and silk is very very delicate so I don't want anything sticking up that would grab and get pulled on. Now. I'm going to add this little marguerite here. You don't have to, but you know, a little extra sparkle. I get these off of eBay, actually. They're really inexpensive. This is like, I think, a four or five, probably a five millimeter. It's pretty tiny, but they're really beautiful. They're not Swarovski. They're just some off-brand that I found, 
and I'll put the link below for one of the colors. They come in all different colors, but I was surprised at how close they look to the Zwarovski Marguerites. And if you do like to add a little rhinestone look and color to your embroidery pieces, these Marguerites are really beautiful, and the Zwarovski ones are very expensive, and these were like one-tenth of the price. So I'm going to add some little um, fifth gold 15s. I think these kind of give like a look of baby's breath. You don't have to add this. This is just what I do. And you could use silver too, but the gold shows up better on camera. So I'm just going to tuck them in between the leaves and things and it will add the final little bits of detail. It also will help because I've used this darker color thread. I'm going to go over my stitches that just won't disappear and the easiest way to hide those is with a little bead. So I'm just going to continue adding that and I will come back and then we can attach the backing. I've finished adding all of those little 15s just to give a little extra sparkle. I just kind of like the way that brings things out around the flowers. But if you prefer to put little lines or waves or whatever, this is your design, do it your way. And now I'm just going to back the heart. Now, most people would say, just take this pattern and put it on the back. Well, no, it's actually grown a little bit since we've added the beads and stuff to the edge because here you can see a previous one that I've cut and it's just a little bit short. So learn from my mistakes. <laughs> that didn't work for me either. The logical idea just didn't work. I forget that it grows as I'm doing it. Now this is a piece of ultra suede. It was an old coat that I bought off of eBay that I cut up. Um, it was a nice color blue and it was inexpensive so I just cut it up and reused it and I'm just going to take a sharpie marker and go around this just so that you can see really well a pen would work the same and this will just give me that perfect little spot I would use normally this pale pink suede for the backing because I think it goes better but I've been using this dark teal thread so you could see better and that's not going to go really well with the pink. So this teal will look pretty on the back. This It's like a bright electric blue, a beautiful 80s blue. And so I'm just going to cut this out and then I'm going to take some E6000. Now you don't necessarily need to use the glue, but it's a help. So if you happen to have it, use it, it'll help you. If you don't have it, it's hard to keep it straight on here, but I've done it without the glue, so it's not impossible. It's just a basic E6000 glue, and I'm just going to put a little dab in the middle and let this dry for five minutes, and then I'll come back and we'll start to put the beads around it. So I'm just going to glue this down and wait five minutes for this to set up and then we'll put the beaded trim on that. So I've got this pretty dry now and I'm noticing on this side that it's hanging over just a bit. This is a good time to just trim this up. It's very hard to get it exact when you're not holding it on the item. And so don't worry about it. Just go back and trim it. Those little pieces will just be out of our way. Now I'm going to use this teal because I kind of feel like it needs some contrast, but there's lots of different ways you can edge this. Here is the same color piece. This is the opposite piece of shibori, just another half of that exact same ribbon. And I've used some greens and pinks and lavenders around the edges. I've just followed the colors. So there's different ways you can do it. You don't necessarily have to do it with a solid, but I'm going to do this one with a solid just for the contrast to show you the difference. And all you do to trim this is you take your needle and make your first stitch of sandwiching this together. Let me get as close as I can to the camera. So I'm going through all three layers, the shibori, the ultra suede, and the felt just so I, I'm coming out the top. And now I'm going to add one bead and I'm going to go back through the bottom and pull it. And then I'm going to go through the bottom of that bead and pull it up. And this is going to make it stand up so it won't go sideways. So you'll see it just standing straight up. 
Let me do a couple of them and you'll get a better idea. So I'm grabbing another bead, going through all three layers once again. And then I'm going back through the bottom to the top of the bead. And what this does is it makes these beads stand up side by side next to each other and just creates this beautiful little sandwiched edging so you don't even see that um, felt in the center. It just gets lost in the middle. And you just get this beautiful edge of beads. Let me do one more and then I'll come and show you closer so you can just see that edge. Of course the thread is fighting with me because I'm in the air about eight inches up as close as I can get to the camera. Okay, and then I just go through the bottom of it. And you can see how it's starting to give that beautiful blue trim. So I'm going to finish, continue going around the entire heart and I'll come back and show you. So I finished up adding the beads on the edging and you can see what a difference it makes. You don't even see the felt. You don't even see that it was white or whatever color it was. So whatever you have, you can pretty much work with because the beads will cover it up. Now I have left my thread on the back here. If I decided to add a pin back to this, I could sew that on easily then. Or if I were going to continue on and put a necklace coming off the sides of it, I can work through that. The other thing you can do is add a bell to it, which I will show you in a minute to a different one because I wanted to put it on a chain and that's a different look. So there's so many things you can do with these. It's just whatever you want to use them on. So let me come back and show you the other one and how to put the bail on it. So here's a previous heart that I made and I wanted to add a bail to it so I could add it to this chain. So in order to put the bail on it, I am just going to run my needle. I have a knot on the end of my thread. I've just got a piece of thread. Let me move this out of the way. Oops, there goes my beads. And I am just going to use a size 11 bead to start with. Okay, let me just go through that one more time. You know I like to put a locking stitch. Always good to have an extra stitch in there. Can never hurt. So I'm going to just figure out how many size 11s I need to go around this chain. I'm gonna call it, I don't really know what else to call it. And I am going to, at the top of that, add a size six bead because it has a large hole in it. It's going to make quite a few passes very easily through the bead. And what I like to do is take this and let's go, oops, I've got it latched. Easier if I unlatch it. Okay, so if we go halfway around the chain, that's pretty much where we need to be. So hanging wise, you have to figure out how much is this going to hang around the chain because you've got the top of the heart that you don't want to stick up and hit that cord. It'll look kind of odd. It would be better if it hung a little bit lower. So for it to hang lower, I need to add about three more beads. And these are things that you unfortunately have to think about ahead of time because once you add those beads, it gets harder to add them in the end. So I'm going to add my large size six bead at the top and that will be the middle. And I'm thinking that's probably a nice place to hang it. And so now what I'm going to do is basically just count how many beads I have already on there, and that's what I'm going to add to the other side. 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Okay, so I have 16 beads, and so I just have to add 16 more and go around that. Now, what I'm going to do is go through the back and come forward again and add 16 more. And I'm going to do this three times and every time I'm going to go through this six size six bead. So let me do it the first time so I can show you what I mean. And 
this is going to bulk up this bale so it doesn't look so frail. I've got this big bulky heart. I don't want something that looks so delicate. I want something that looks a lot more like it would match when I put it onto this chain. So I'm going to go around and do the back and then come back up and go around again so that I have three strands and I'll show you how that comes out. Now I've gone through it three times and you can see you've got a much bulkier, nicer looking bale on this and it hangs a little bit lower which is what I really wanted because I didn't want this to come up too tight and be too squishy that you can't even tell it's a heart. I wanted to make sure you could see that. Now I've gone through these threads, the three threads, another time to reinforce them and I'm just going to tie off in the back here and the way I'm going to tie off is basically I'm just going to do a half hitch knot a couple times around and so that means I make a loop and then I go through the loop twice and then just tie it and I will do that one more time and then I will just cut it and that's all you have to do to just seal this all off and it's perfect. It's not a very heavy pendant anyway. Shibori basically just is the weight of the beads, which is not much because the felt doesn't weigh much. And of course that knot doesn't want to give me a hard time because I'm on camera. There we go. And that's all there is to it and just snip it off. And for show and tell, my favorite part. This is just a simple ribbon type of necklace that I buy these off of eBay. They're great if you just like to make some shibori pendants and it's a pretty way to display them with the shibori really being the show off of the piece. I wanna bring this a little bit closer so you can see better. And this one I outlined with just the same color crystal and the same color size 11 bead, which I thought was enough going on since there was so much color change going on in the shibori right here. Here. Sometimes I like to do a color change around the edge too and sometimes I like to just leave it solid. Depends on what the color mixes are. And then I have another one which I have done just a beaded chain on both sides of it with some polymer clay beads and let me pull it up closer so you can see better. And this one was just like a tealish color with purple and it just gave a nice contrast with the marguerite flowers. And this once again has the same color size 11 and the same color crystals just for a little bit lo different look and definition. And this one is one of my favorites. This one's a deep purple one. And this is tubular netting that I've done on this. If you wanna know how to do tubular netting, Beating for Perfectionists, I will put the link down below, has a fabulous tutorial on how to do tubular netting, so there's no point in me doing it also. There's so many wonderful YouTubers out there. I like to promote other people that have great videos. And once again, here's a shibori with purples, and I used some deep blue dye to get that definition where the purple goes darker and lighter. And once again, I used the same color beads. Is the pink one, which I really love this one. And it's just got the pink shibori beads that I've made to match and some flowers on it. I like to do some longer fringe just to switch it up. And I wanna bring this up close so you can see. Now this one, I did do different colors of beads around the edge. I did the same color crystals and then I switched up the color on the size 11s just to give it a little bit of a change so you can see that side is green and the sides a lighter pink and a darker pink and a darker pink over here switching back to the green just to give a little bit of a different look so there's different ways you can switch it up and I love to show you that and this one I think is my favorite one this one is basically a freeform necklace which means there is no rhyme or reason to how I put things in here. I put a lentil bead, an embossed lentil on here. I've added some marguerites. I've added some uh, rhinestone pods, some small flowers, another large rhinestone pod, and some other smaller flowers. And even, it's like everything but the kitchen sink, pretty much. And even some of my lentil beads. I just like to, I find certain colors and they all talk to me and I just have to include them no matter what. And I love to add the extra sparkle with the rhinestones. It really adds some difference. And let me bring this up closer because this one I did edge in different color crystals and in different color size 11. So you really can see that definition with the rainbow going on there. And it really brought it out in the whole necklace. I love this one. 
And here I have just a little heart that I've added to a clutch purse. I just wanna bring it up closer so you can see it, just done in the pastel colors with some blues. And it just adds a completely different look to a plain little bag. So I picked this up in an estate sale and I just wanted to give it a different look. I may even add some embroidery to this later on, but just something that gives you ideas that you don't necessarily have to use them for jewelry. And then I have one that I've made just into a pin. So if you wanted to make one into a brooch, this one I had a little brass finding. I get these off of eBay. You have to punch in brass findings and you will find thousands of them so most of them are antique sometimes you can find newer ones and this one I did just in the gold on the edging and with pink crystals and you can see I've just sewn a pin back to it that's pretty much all you need to do so you can make a great little heart pin that you can put on anything and here is my final piece, this beautiful pastel -y kind of fun powdery colors. Um, I, I don't know why, I just really love all the brightness of this pink that just pops with the rest of it, kind of a contrast. And I've done three strands so that it kind of really sets this heart off with a longer fringe. Now I am starting another channel. It's called Turtle Soup Fashion. I will put the link to the bottom of the right top of the comments. And I am going to start to show you how I fashion my jewelry with clothes and some different clothing hacks and some maybe household DIYs. It's a different channel because this one will just be beads and polymer clay because that's what people wanted on this channel and that's what they signed up for. And if you're interested in the other, you can sign up for that and you actually get to see what I look like. So let me bring this a little bit closer so you can see all the beautiful colors in this because I have to share all of this shibori goodness. I just love shibori. It's just so different and so unique and I yet to have two pieces that look even similar nonetheless alike. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you have a great day and stay warm up north. Thanks for watching.